weeks. So as I sit back and I observe, I remember when I was a little boy, we'd be at the basketball court. There's always somebody that want to be unruly, ignorant, foolish, irrational, and hard to work with, right? So when we played basketball, what we would do is um, we take our ball and go. Take our ball and we would go home. This had a, 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 a kind of odd effect that I noticed. Be a whole bunch of trash talk. But within short order, if a ball don't show up, everybody go home. They go on their separate ways. You know, you got some stragglers that sit around and stay where they at. Don't want to make no moves. They just want to stay stagnant. But that's fine. They still can't play ball. They can stay at the park on the basketball court. But they can't play ball without a basketball. And those who own the basketball is aware of this. They know this. But if the person who owned the basketball is unaware that he can take his ball and go home and it would cripple the whole game, he don't have to tear nothing up. He don't have to fight nobody on the court. He don't have to fight the bully. He don't have to slap the little guy. All he had to do is just say, hey, make it my ball. I'm going home. And he go home. Everybody going to be looking at him crazy. But guess what? Everybody end up going home if no other balls come. Now, Expand that on a massive scale, like globally, right? Let's just say that America, no, let's say, we don't, we don't even use country we in. We want to use two countries that don't got nothing to do with us directly. So let's say we take uh, Brazil wants to attack India. And none of the soldiers are willing to fight in that war. None of them. Not a single one from the generals to the foot soldiers. How the heck can we die? How can you rage a war um, when the tools of the war are inoperable? They don't work. You can't. It's impossible. Take your ball and go the fuck home. That's. But you would have to have a call for a specific type of unity across various borders. You would have to have a call for unity that would embrace so many people that when people take their ball and go home, everybody go home. They already know what it's about. They already know what it's about. It's about the march to peace. And the march to peace sometimes is a family-oriented event. Go home. Play with your children. Kiss your wife. Hug your mama. Get wisdom from your father. You know? You don't have to always tear things apart. Shred stuff. Um, it's a reason for all of this chaos is because we keep allowing it. The easiest way to stop the foolishness and the ignorance, the easiest way, is all of the mothers tell your child, we ain't fighting for these animals. Because they have to be animals to pit us together to fight us like animals. And if they're going to put us together and fight us like animals, they have to use something against us that would allow us to do that. And the greatest tool in the history of the world is divide and conquer. Now, we've been thinking that there's been one nation versus another nation in these wars. That's absolutely not what it is. It's never been um, in Germany versus France in World War II. That wasn't even the purpose. World War One, it got nothing to do with no Lithuanian ships. You know, it got nothing to do with that. And the, it's, it's population control by using the very people that you want to quell the population as the implements of war. They know that we like combat because we mastered the martial arts in um, all ancient cultures because we wanted to learn how to defend our clans from invaders no matter where they may come from. Here we are now. We on earth. We look around and all we see is conflict, bloodshed, 
disunity, disharmony, backbiting, backstabbing, resentments, hatred, bigotry, foolishness, and ignorance. All that stuff in one pot, then they stir it up and feed it to us, and we eat it. We don't have to eat it. Every mother should just call her children in the military and just say, come home. We're not fighting for these animals. If we're going to have to have any type of conflict, we should be fighting in our own interest. Who's gaining? Look at the wounded warriors. See, we need to do something like to federalize this wounded warrior project. And, um... Right, but that's the whole point. It was a trick from the beginning. Okay, I'm going to read this. Many nations that does not look like us came together against us and plotted against each other. Right, but see, that's the trick. Because they used the European, the minority population on the planet. By exalting the minority population, they got the smallest group. So at the time that the people of the mass realized that the smallest group is oppressing the largest group, then we could just annihilate them and get rid of the problem, but that was never the problem to begin with because then they're going to go to the next smallest group and superiorize them. We can't fall for that. This is the end of them games. So it worked like this. Ain't no more white people that was created in this Babylonian experiment. The genetic um, mess up has been cleaned. That's over with. Now everybody have a uh, the capabilities of rising to their own level of greatness, everybody. And because everybody can rise to their own level of greatness, we should all be able to pull this plank out of our eye and see the enemy for who he is. If we trace it all back, it ends up with one person. And, you know, they want to tell us, you know, don't be anti-Semitic and all of this. It ain't, it ain't Israel as a nation over there in the Middle East because they pawns. They pawns. The Khazarians, the Ashkenazi, the Savardi, the, those are pawns. Nope, those are not pawns. They're more like rooks and bishops on the chessboard. they bigger pieces, but they're expendable. So you got to track it back. Now, how do you track it back? You follow the dollar. You follow the currency. You find out who reaps the greatest benefit of all. Well... I used to think when I was a lot younger that it was the royal families of Europe. But then I came to do research to realize that it's not the royal families of Europe. It traced back to one particular house in one particular place and one particular per person. And he wears a crown that represents three tiers, which is your economics, your military and political strength. And also it represents your religious strength. By combining them all together, that's where your spiritual weaving comes in, your spider web. So if the world want to know who's responsible, you got to find out who's claimed right of all of the souls on earth to undermine the rights of the people who own their own soul. Now remember, your U.S. Constitution says, nope, your Declaration of Independence says that you have God-given inalienable rights. That means that nobody can't take them from you, but they can trick you out of them if you surrender them. They can trick you into giving up your rights. But there's somebody on this planet that filed paperwork in 1301 to capture the souls of the people. And it's the same one person that seats all of the royalty and confirms them and gives them the uh, appearance of being the problem. Now, the royal families do have things that's going to be dealt with, like adrenochrome and the drinking of baby blood that's prohibited. And you don't know that Queen Elizabeth is not still alive. She's been dead. That's an imposter that they're using over there. So they don't want nobody to know she's gone. And Pope Francis makes mockery of every single human on earth. He is the animal. I told y'all at the close of the age, I would pull the curtain off the man who stands behind it.
pulling the strings in the land of Oz. His name now is Pope Francis. But it's the same symbiote who jumped body to body for thousands of years so he can survive eternally. And he wants to deprive you of your eternal life by allowing his host to live as comfortable as possible. But he have to have a certain um, biological signature trait. And this certain biological signature trait allows the symbiote to attach. Now, if you go back, you probably won't see it very far back in history, but when they see the Pope, they tell you there's a meeting of... Um, what you call them, bishops, and that they are all in there voting and negotiating who would be Pope. That's cool. That makes sense, but it ain't true. You see, they got a period of time where they have to go through different blood types and genetic signatures in order that the symbiote can actually cleave to the host. And so they have a series of um, these hosts that sit there in a stasis-like state while the symbiote um, attaches through his eye into his brain. And there's a part of the brain that connects the two hemispheres, and this little symbiote lodges there. Now, I don't think the world should participate in this rotten, bloody mess anymore. You know what I think they ought to do? I think every head of state need to send me and my thugs over there so I can get that symbiote out of his head. All these kids don't need to keep get coming home with arms blowed off, legs blowed off, holes in their body, bullets in their head, plates in their head. That's, that's horrendous. That's atrocious. And it's unnecessary and uncalled for. But nobody wants to trace the, the issue of divide and conquer back to its source. People should love each other and should try to work together at all costs to overcome this unstoppable evil. But we don't want to do that because the evil turns us against each other. And it began with the Tower of Babel scenario. The Tower of Babel was there as a reminder of the problem and who caused it. So, <clears throat> when you go through the John Wick series, John Wick is a man in love with a woman that he met that got him out of a horrible lifestyle. And as you walk through the storyline, he ends up in part three. Now, notice there's three parts to the, to the, to the um, John Wick story. And he goes into the desert, and here you have Maitreya. Here you have Maitreya. I told y'all he was the one behind the problem. I posted him in Africa deceiving people on my Facebook page so y'all can see exactly who's responsible for this evil that we are being subjugated by. Um, also, um, his pawn or his queen is the Pope. Check that out. His queen is the Pope. Now, here's the analysis that you understand what you're dealing with. If you go back in history, you will notice that before 325, um, there was no such thing as what we call the Catholic Church because Christendom hadn't been established yet. It was established by Pope Constantine. Pope Constantine um, needed the uh, Believers, the faithful, the Almoravides, the defenders of the faith, he needed to capture them, put them in sequestered locations, and under the threat of death, um, they would have to come up with a common belief system in which they would install the papacy. They did that, but they left us clues along the way, breadcrumbs, for us to discover this deception and expose this rotten beast for who he is. Now, the Pope is a, is the queen. The seat that he's sitting in, this was originally called the Noon Priestess. They never changed them. They just called them nuns now. And the Noon Priestess was headed up by a woman who we know her as the Black Madonna. 
and um a lot of people that understand the uh history of ancient egypt will call her isis the queen of heaven and earth that's her seat i'm going to replace her back on her seat if the people want the tyranny of earth to end otherwise i'm just gonna go hang out with my peeps in the hood and do hood stuff we're gonna clean up the hood i would rather clean earth up than to just focus on one local community i didn't do all this studying for nothing i couldn't rest in my soul until i found out who was responsible for this treachery the one you call Yahweh in your Old Testament, that you call God now, is the same one that the Christ called Legion in the New Testament. And your proof is all in the book. When you go back to the tribes of Israel, one of the tribes is called Gad, G-A-D. If you know grammar, Grimm's Law of Grammar say all vowels are interchangeable in translation. The word Gad is your word God. When they translate it in the uh, German, it becomes the word Gut, G-U-T, because the D and the T is interchangeable. Also, in the vowel scenario, just like when you change your F and Vs it, when you go from a knife to knives, it's the same law of grammar. So now we understand that Gad means a troop. Well, when he was asked the demon who are you he said we are legion for we are many that's saying the exact same thing now the absolute verification is the pope has declared himself owner of all souls on earth and it's the same symbiote it's just a different host and he think that nobody's going to figure him out i've posted him antagonizing and taunting the people of earth and doing exactly what the text say he would do at this time to expose who he is he said that satan is strong and the christ has failed now he's supposed to be a representative of the christ but he's telling you christ failed think about that don't believe me. Go check all this stuff I'm telling you out. You can just scroll my page and all the evidence you need is on my Facebook. It's not hard to find. Not only that, <clears throat> um, all of the signs say he the last pope. When you go through all of the historical records of prophecies about the pope, that's it. Because he had to be exposed. And once he get exposed, the books say that the world would look and say, is this him? This one? Is this the one that had us all under this terror and treachery? Well, not exactly, but exactly that's him. He is the hidden hand behind all of the treachery and the wickedness on this planet. They had, they go to JFK's speech, separation of church and state. I'm going to give you the historical background of that speech. The separation of church and state speech came about because Pope Francis being a Jesuit and the Jesuit priesthood being the tyrants who come and put the pressure on the presidents and heads of state around the world in order to do the bidding of the Catholic Church. Mind you, this is not a condemnation of every Catholic priest, but the pedophile cult of priests, they all his. You want to see a righteous priest, all you got to do is go to Chicago. Father Flager, fight for the rights of the people. So that don't mean that all of the Catholics are bad. See, that's how they get us. Because they take a minority to shine a negative light on the majority. We done with that. We it's, This is a new era. We're going into the Aquarian age, the age of water, the age of spirit. And the Bible say that if you're going to worship the creator, if you're going to worship, you need to worship in spirit and truth. Well, we're going into the Aquarian age. That's pure spirit. All we got to do now is marry the spirit of the Aquarian age to the fervor of the truth. Now, I wouldn't want no nation like to bomb the Vatican. That wouldn't be cool. I'll just take me a couple of these thugs and 
clear the land over there around it. I go in there myself because I would like to drag y'all that sucker out into the square, cut that symbiote out his head, hold it up for the world to see that that's what's been causing all the earth's problems for thousands of years. Thousands of years this little rotten bastard has been causing problems. You see, it worked like this. The Yahweh dude is calling himself Maitreya over in Africa. Scroll down my page a couple months. You'll see all the information, all of the verification that you need to prove exactly what I'm saying so you don't have to just accept my word. Um, one of my teachers said, if you're going to use the right knowledge, you got to use the facts. And, you know, in the system we in, they believe in facts. And so scroll down. Look. Tell me what you see. Maitreya was an ancient Babylonian deity that we call 